What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Brood War ladder cast. I know you're all pretty busy right now watching the ASL. And so I really appreciate you guys stopping by the channel today to join me in watching this fantastic game between Best and 1127, that Wiko player also known as Noel. Actually, we've got two games here to go through. So let's go ahead and get started. Best is popping down a gateway. Let's see if he takes a gas. If he wants to go for Zealot Pressure. He's probably not going to take that gas. There's the gas, so it'll probably just be a Dragoon here. We're going to get a gas from 1127 as well. Pretty much all the games we've seen from Wiko 1127 are uh, TVZ games. And he showed us a pretty interesting mech focused style and so i'm i'm interested to see what he can show in terran versus protoss because all of his like a, yes terran versus Zerg games were mech but they were also very cheesy a lot of wacky play a lot of vulture drops vulture run bys and that sort of thing if you missed shine versus Wiko 1127 yesterday you definitely gotta go check that out i'll probably put a little box up here at the top right hand corner so you guys can go and look at that one that was an insane game with a lot of cheese and just so many drone deaths it was insane and so you should definitely take a look at that one but i'm wondering if it's going to be the same sort of thing here from wiko the new player to make it into the ssl this season or the asl this season him along with Motive, I think, are the only two who qualified for the first time ever uh, this season. So, you know, interesting to see what this guy's all about. I remember we had another player, I guess his name was Ivory last season, who was like that kind of dark horse player who came out of nowhere. And, you know, he had a short-lived run in the SSL, but it was pretty cool to see somebody who just came out of nowhere didn't really have a chance, but, you know, threw out some interesting games. And definitely the games so far from Wiko 1127 have been interesting, if nothing else. Doesn't feel like he's quite at the level of someone like Best. So I imagine Best is probably going to walk over him. But maybe we'll see something, you know, a little freaky. We'll get something a little crazy out of Wiko 1127. Maybe he can get some cheese out here and... Show us something we, maybe we haven't seen before. Now, a uh, tank first. And a no bunker at the front. And generally with the tank opener, you usually want to get a bunker. Uh, you can get a lot of pressure coming onto your side of the map. He starts to bunker and mines. Well, that's kind of interesting. Usually players will go with the vulture. Get a vulture out on the map. Send it out to somewhere in the middle here. Around here, just so that... It's kind of hidden out on the map. That way the Protoss needs to stay back at home because you could always come and place mines behind that Dragoon. And as it retreats, it might just run into mines. He's going to push across the map. Looks like a fake double, but with only one tank. One tank and four Marines. It's a very weak fake double, but it's kind of quick. Let's see if he can get any damage done. He's uh, sending probes to the natural. Or sending drones to the natural, excuse me, and following up with the Vulture. He starts speed. Does he start speed? No, he's got he's got mines just finishing up here. We're going to start speed. There it is. Okay, he does start speed. I was expecting that because he seems to rely on vulture run bys quite a lot uh, in these games. And I doubt this will be any different. He's trying to run right up on top of this and place the third mine. He gets it down, but Bess is doing a great job of moving back. And good God, that was a great shot. Oh, he's, he wants that tank so bad. He's even going to sack a bunch of health on his Dragoon to get it. Oh, the mine connection, though. That was sick. Oh, that was so sick. That mine connection at the end actually swinging things back into our Terran player's favor a little bit. They get a probe kill. A little bit uh, lackluster there with the micro. He only gets two probes. He definitely could have gotten more if he'd done a bit of um, flick micro there took some damage from those probes and so he gets kind of the bare minimum 
He did lose a tank. He lost all the Marines and what three four dragons total were killed I, I still feel like this is pretty good for best he is behind in worker somehow guess with that cc finishing and constant scv production during that a bit of chaos a little earlier we've got noel in its small worker lead just two workers ahead but that's really showing his quality Honestly, with all of that kind of craziness, the micro battle that was going on between these two, the fact he was able to still build SCVs and get his uh, army moving properly. I mean, he's doing very well here. He's doing really, really well. He even snipes that one Dragoon with the mine. We've got a shuttle coming across the map though now. And what's back at home for the defense? Huh? Spider mine's already set up. He gets his third spider mine out. He needs maybe one more over here. It's going to leave a little bit of a gap. He could potentially fly through. Oh my, it's going to take so much damage. He loses the shuttle. Oh no, he lost the shuttle. He lost the shuttle and the reaver inside. That was the perfect cleanup here for 112. I'm so impressed. I am so impressed. This guy is playing out of his mind right now. That is wild to me. He managed to shut down Bess shuttle like that. Perfect placement on these turrets, by the way. Bess really thought he could slide through there, but not even getting the Reaver out of the shuttle. That's a major mistake from Bess. A major miscalculation there means that this push could actually be devastating. It's not like it's uh, probably not going to kill here or anything, but coming out into the front and setting up right in front of best base, he might be able to snipe some probes. He could potentially force some bad trades with the Dragoons. He's getting a few probes here and there and really pushing forward aggressively. This is only three tanks, mind you, but without this shuttle and the Reaver just now coming out, it's going to be very hard for him to clear this. Tank's going to move forward. You can get into a position where you can hit the gas from here, but there's no gas geyser just yet. That's just focusing on getting units out right now. He will be able to snipe that one tank, but falling back here with the mines behind this, he should be able to recover to a safe position. Managed to kill a quite a few dragoons, a couple of probes, and now the worker count is getting huge. About 43 to 53. 10 extra SCVs are available for 1127 and he's setting up mines over here to preempt the fourth base. Everything's gone so well. I'm really shocked. Two more turrets coming up here at the periphery. He doesn't want to be harassed. He knows best has a pension penchant for flying shuttles into the main. But with, you know, two here and two here and a bunch of mines in the middle. I don't think you're going to want to do that, especially how bad after how badly the first fly through uh, went for this guy. So, yeah, I wonder what best can do to bring this one back or is there going to be an opportunity? Is there going to be a hole in the game? You know, there's a reason why this guy hasn't won an ASL yet. Um, one, one, two, seven. And that is likely because he's got some sort of hole in his game, whether it be in the early game, the late game. So far, the early game looks fantastic. But as we go further and further along, it's usually uh, more and more favored towards these stronger players. Like, Best should have an advantage in that case. Now, moving forward here, he's going to set up a turret. Tanks are kind of clumped, but he's got two Goliaths with this. I don't see a CC. And I don't think we're going to get one. One, two, three, four, five, six factory two base, I think is what we're about to see. I believe we're going to have just a lot of units get rallied to this spot. No CC and you're going to push across the map, build a CC behind the push. I think that's what we're going to have. Kind of making it look like he really wanted to take that extra base, but does seem to be a bit of a fake. Go ahead and pick off that 
observer vulture run by over here towards the natural but all the dragoons are still back at home it's just the reaver on the front line slowing things down looks like he's gonna be able to snipe this while best is paying attention elsewhere yeah those reavers go down once again ends up losing his reavers just not quite paying attention enough and 1127 splitting the attention of best pretty impressive stuff pushing forward now he really needs to bring some scvs with this most of these are at a third hp one two and i think a third one is at just one third hp yeah this one this one and this one right here I'm in a bit of a hard time. Let's see. He's going to start a turret here at the front. Best is building seven zealots right now. That's really all he has in his pocket. Oh, the shuttle. He really needs that shuttle so bad. He loses some HP on that. He's going to load it up now. But that's only like one volley from four Goliaths away from death. So he's got to be really careful about how he engages this now. Dragoons are going to go around the back. And dude, 1127 is really close to winning this. Very, very close to winning this game right now. He's right over here in the natural. He's hitting that gas. He's tracking down these dragoons on the side. Now, it looks like a reaver's going to be brought over here with the two zealots to maybe pick off these uh, reinforcements. No, there's no reaver in here. It's just zealots only. And more turrets are being built on the front line. Oh gosh, this is really bad. There's the command center behind the push. This six factory is devastating. Flies directly in and gets immediately annihilated there. Here he comes with those zealots trying to drag mines, but the mine drags are not going very well. Tanks at the front are dying. There's a, it's a bit unfortunate he didn't end up repairing these because more of them would have survived that zealot uh, attack, but... He's still going to hold the position for now. Nexus is getting low. All the probes have been transferred over to 12 o'clock. Zelts are coming out in a very thin trickle now. Still has a lot of money in the bank. Nine zealots are on the way right now. I don't think he can break this. That's so many tanks at the front line. 11 tanks right here in the face of Best blocking his exit. And he drag a mine into this big mine connection there for best but most of the rest of the zealots just evaporate and gg is called 1127 snagging victory away from best that is impressive but can he do it twice in a row let's go ahead and find out game number two is coming right up okay game number two now best in the top right hand corner 1127 in the bottom right this is going to be on kickback and I actually just watched a few seconds ahead of time here and uh, <laughs> something crazy is about to happen. So hold on to your butts, boys. That's just going to pull out something wacky in just a moment and see him throwing down the pylon at the front. Now, I assume this is going to be for a gateway in the front, Put on a little pressure early game. But when is this going to happen? 1127 just minding his business hanging out down here in the bottom right and uh, you know the most impressive thing i think from that last game was the fact that 1127 won without using any cheese this guy i was expecting something wacky to come out of him but he played such a beautiful straight up game and just crushed face it was really really awesome to see just gonna throw down a barracks. I wouldn't expect anything different from him this game. Geyser. Manages to get it down before any sort of gas steal comes out. And here it is. Okay, three probes being sent off the line. This is what I saw. Three probes gonna be sent directly to the Terran base. A pretty wild and unexpected move here. I wonder what this is for. I guess he's gonna try and fight the SCVs. And just try to get a kill here on the building, the one building the barracks. Like, he's getting a lot of damage on this, but I don't think he's going to be able to stop it. It's about to finish. There's the three probes coming in. Three probes. Are they going to be able to get it? Oh, he doesn't get it. Well, he gets it, but after the barracks is done. So, 
after the barracks is done it might as well be you know not a kill here that's um that's a little bit funny is best gonna throw this game away i mean i thought that he was gonna be fine right but just playing normal is he what what's going on is is best like losing his confidence or something what what the heck happened is he really not gonna play a straight up game here against 1127 he thinks that he can just he just can't win or what's going on first zealot makes his way in here we've got enough for a factory although not enough minerals yet uh this one marine is probably gonna die but great micro so far good blocking with the SEVs. really really good blocking so far excellent excellent body block there moving southward to just trap that uh zealot or, or prevent the zealot from getting on top of the marines now he can just fight the probe and he doesn't actually need to chase that zealot he just needs to wait for that next one to come in okay the next one comes in this is where things get a little scary right uh zealots can start to flank from either side and make things difficult for you we'll go ahead and lose one marine oh another marine gonna go down here oh man that's really really rough okay this is starting to be bad we were holding off very very well up until this point but now we're gonna start to lose scvs two go down immediately the marine pops out zealot here very low on that hp but another one's about to walk in can it deny the factory for a moment see if you can get this kill oh good pull there really good pull and now he can use the uh supply depot trick just microing back and forth between the supply depot and the barracks marine just gonna run around ring around the rosie here he goes into the mineral line he gets one of those low hp scvs but a great surround finishing that off excellently done there so when all said and done a little bit of a lead on those probes just a bit but quite a few zealots have been spent here i would still say the best in a reasonable spot factory is done bunkers on the way there's the machine shop we've got a three uh, the three probe lead and we're on our way towards that nexus see the dragoon's gonna come unfortunately the vulture gonna take quite a bit of damage second dragoon is on the way and a quick pylon block there from best really nice way to uh, deal with that run by just checking to make sure there was a bunker and there is indeed one plus an scv here just to block the presence of the scv is actually very important right now you need that scv there if the dragoon runs by and goes into the main you have to pull the marines out of the bunker they're so low hp it's it's going to be a really bad time so glad to see him leave that scv there just for the body block in case anything crazy happens doesn't have any uh, tank on the way just yet is getting mines though and a cc coming up here this is a typical vulture expand but from a bit of a deficit so let's see if 1127 can play really standard straight up and win against best when he's not in a lead because remember last game he was in a pretty significant lead from the moment that best flew in and lost his early uh reaver right that reaver went down really really quick he lost a couple probes before that even um some dragoons went down it wasn't the worst trade in the world but it was pretty bad this time he's looking a lot better he's put on way more pressure to the terran his nexus is up before the cc not a lot before but it is up before and that means his probe lead will continue to grow gateways are finishing up here just two and then gonna be going into oh just observer for now looks like he's thinking about a third base right away now i want to mention something about this map as you can see the gas on high grounds here are about 3,000 gas rather than your typical five typical 5,000 gas at a regular main base also these patches they're about 1200 instead of 1500 so there's quite a bit less traction or what would you call it there, there's quite a bit less life in each of these bases they're only going to give you a brief spurt of income and then you'll have to find other greener pastures to move to 
I believe these ones are the same. This is also 3,000. This is also 1,200. Um, I'm not sure about the ones in the middle here, but if you go down and you pick another main base, you can get a full, you know, 1,500 minerals and um, 5,000 gas. But those are obviously a bit harder to hold on to, depending on which race you are. I think it's all right for Terran. You can just put tanks on high ground here, get a bunch of mines, and then you should be able to hold another main base. Um, of course, there's always shuttle bus and all that kind of good stuff, but that's a little bit further down the line. We've got the third base on the way now. Um, tanks do not have siege mode. That's a little bit uh, funny. He's skipped a lot of these things in order to get the vehicle weapons out quicker. And he wasn't expecting too much pressure here, but he may end up losing a tank because of that. He loses one. Is he going to lose another? Two tanks go down already. All right. He is really getting punished here by Bass for cutting these corners. Yeah, a lot of Dragoons are going to go down, but three tanks is exactly what Bess was looking for. Plus a few SCVs on the backside and a lot of lost mining time. Hell, he'll absolutely take that. Some great micro here from 1127 to make sure that all of these go down as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Didn't lose too many SCVs there. Still at 39 to just the 43 of Bast, but the tank losses are what's really hurting him right now. We will be having Reaver out here in a moment. Vervitic Drive is coming online as well, and Bast is getting into a better and better position. With the lack of tanks, I doubt that 1127 will be able to do something like a 5-6 fact attack. So he's probably going to have to sit back and just play really, really passive. Try to win his way back into this game in a kind of a longer uh, scenario. That might be possible. So expect to see a, a third base on high ground here. Probably be seeing that soon. He may also want to push out a little bit and push back the, the Dragoons so he can slide Vultures out here on the map. Really needs to get a presence out there uh, so that he can actually deal some damage. I don't see a Starport. He is very good with Dropship though. Instead going to go... Okay, he will go for 6 Factory. I guess maybe he's thinking the opposite of what I was thinking, which is that, you know, maybe the only way he can win is just to go for a push now and hope that best, you know, over builds his um, economy, like over expands right now, gets a little, a little bit too greedy. I don't know. This is this is the opposite of what I was thinking. What I'm thinking is that, OK, we've lost a bunch of tanks. We're not going to have the tank number that can kill with a six factory anymore. We need to go into a longer game so that we can have more time to build up into more tanks. Let's get a starport. Let's get some drops out on the map to buy us that time. That's not the way that 1127 is thinking. Let's see if his idea ends up panning out here. Let's see if Best is expecting this. Is he going to have enough units to deal with this? He is, of course, expanding a lot. But is he overexpanding? I don't think so. I think he's got just enough gateways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's got ten gateways. He's got two reavers with those, what, four missing tanks that were lost earlier. Imagine this is this is four more tanks. He's at 12, or he's at uh, ten tanks already. And these two popping out, that would be 12. And that's when you really want to go. You just get 12 tanks. Push across the map, six factory push. You make everything, all, all, you know, you keep making tanks. All these are vultures and you just go across the map and you try to kill. Um, now he's going to move out. He's only got, you know, eight tanks here instead of the, that 12, which is kind of rough. Already a pretty good shot from those Reavers as well. Trying to move forward here into range, but he's immediately going to lose a tank. Another couple of shots are going to go down. Oh, that's a bad siege. I mean, I like the fact that he gunned down the shuttle, but the siege up there was really, really bad. That was not the right call. He ends up losing so many tanks, and now we're back down to three. So going from eight to three, he just lost five tanks, guys. 
I don't think this six fact is going to work against best. Best is just way too good at breaking any sort of tear and push. And with these conditions, I think it's a foregone conclusion that he should get bowled over. But let's see what happens with best here. He's lost his reavers, I think. Yeah, all his reavers are gone, but he's got eight zealots in two shuttles. Gonna dive on top of this. Let's see how it goes here. The, the targeting has to be perfect on these drag or on you know tanks on the dragoons but that's way too many zealots yeah he's just gonna run this one over perfect play from best here to finish this one off but it's really down to that initial attack getting these zealots by i mean the three probe pull was in insane i really don't know what best was thinking with that if he had maybe been able to kill that uh at SCV building the, the barracks. Maybe he could have found his way to an easy win, but with when you see those three, I can't believe we didn't just see an immediate bunker. Even a bunker back here would have been okay uh, by the mineral line or, you know, by the uh, factory. Just throw down the bunker. You know that the Protoss player has invested a huge amount of wasted mining time Pulling three probes, three of his earliest probes across the map. Might as well just get, get a bunker or just pull SCVs right away. Pull like four or five SCVs and just hold the, the line here at the front. Don't even let the Zealot run by. Just fight it. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Got, this, is, this is pretty wild. This is the way that Best has to take down 1127. I feel like... 1127 might have had the mental edge here after that first game. Best definitely getting the better of him. But a few more little control things just went... If they had gone just slightly more Terran favored, I think we might have seen 1127 pull it back. Uh, a little bit unfortunate, though, going for 6-fact when he's already lost so many tanks. I really feel like that type of play just does not work against Best. Although when you're this far behind, it feels impossible no matter what you do. And so here we are at the end of our series, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying the ASL and thanks for coming and hanging out in this video with me today. It's been a blast. I'll be looking up for more, uh, out for more 1127 gameplay as well. Uh, his Terran versus Zerg is really, really fantastic, but and, and interesting with like how he goes mech so often but I'm, I'm pretty interested to see more games of him versus Protoss as well if I'm being honest this this was a really good showing from him I feel like he definitely put his best foot forward in this series and hopefully in more games we'll get to see him performing well Maybe we can get like a 1127 versus Motive. I feel like that would be a really nice little series if we could get that put together. I'll definitely cast it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'll see you in the next video.